top of the morning. Good morning to my YouTube family. Gang, gang. Whew, what can I say? It's early Friday morning. The sun is beaming. Uh, on a typical Friday, I would be on my way to the office. However, uh, they've had a positive case in our department. And um, I just chose not to be in the office this week. So anyway, today's topic is anxiety and socializing. I love the light that was coming through, but it's almost like it's trying to give me the blues right now, right? Right. You see that? Speaking of blues, it's my comfy throw. All right, back to the plan. Today, episode three for five part series on anxiety, anxiety and socializing. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, make it do what it do. TGIF, let's get it. favor. Now I feel like I want to relocate. I got to do another video this weekend after I do my washing style because I think I might be getting a little bit of definition. All right, let's relocate and see if we can get a better lighting issue. Gone zones. There we go. Back into the normal lab. All right, so what I'm speaking on, anxiety and socializing. The typical person with the type of anxiety that I have, let's just mention that, would not, I admit and repeat, not be able to pull off even all the live videos that I used to do, uh, posting photos that I do, <clears throat> Starting a YouTube channel, going out with coworkers, that is not typical for anxiety and socializing. But one of the things that I decided to break free from, uh, probably 2017, was being a real secluded, introverted extrovert. Like, I love people. People love me. I make everybody laugh. I'm like crowd control. They used to call me the smile coordinator. I can also feel people energy. I'm very in tune with people and I like to help people feel good about themselves. But <clears throat> in my early stages of anxiety, uh, it was just too much. It was sensory overload for me. A lot of times I would commit saying, yes, I'll be there. And I was not there. Um, yeah. So I would say for the typical person, socializing is very difficult for um, someone suffering with extreme anxiety or maybe like in my case, generalized anxiety disorder. So <clears throat> what you'll get a lot of, excuse me, I got my apple cider and tea right here, morning routine, um, you'll get a lot of people making commitments, agreeing, even hours before, <laughs> and then guess what? We don't show up. It's the anxiety. It's not you. We apologize. Either the fear of 
what could but probably never will happen comes over us. Like we think, oh, we're going to get into a car accident. Oh, we'll trip and fall. We'll say something stupid that somebody doesn't like. Um, we'll, we'll, you know, spill alcohol. It's It varies depending on the person, their brain, their level of uh, triggers and fears to what they actually begin to worry on. But the worry can become so debilitating and crippling that we'll never make it to the event. We do what's minimally required of us. And some people can't even do that. You know, um, my next segment is anxiety and love. And I'm not sure if I had it to touch on um, career because I did that with mental health. But basically, it's it's hard to get and hold and maintain a job when you have a mental health issue, um, especially anxiety. Sometimes anxiety will have you so worried about losing your job that it will cause you to lose your job. Imagine that. And what I mean by that is you'll get so worked up by something that uh, the anxiety begins to tell you that that thing is only going to get worse. You can't beat it. Um, nobody cares. Nobody wants you there. And ultimately, uh, you end up walking away or doing something to sabotage. Fortunately for me, um, I've only righteously been fired one time. One time, okay? And that was because I uh, shared information or spoke negatively of the company to someone else. That was their whole reason for firing me. So, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> but other than that, I've always quit my jobs. The difficulty of that is you're not getting no unemployment. That's for sure, so... However, it is what it is. But anxiety and socializing, it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. But I encourage my people to make that same move I made in 2017. You know, I started failing so much in love and feeling like when the person loved me, uh, they experienced too much of the mental illness and it was too much for them. So it's overstimulating them. It overstimulates me too. I want to run for myself and die every single day dealing with this, but I don't. And truthfully, I can't. <clears throat> so when you look at it on a friendship level, um, you can go out, you can have a good time with those people. They're only exposed to as much of you as you allow them exposed to. You can go in a public arena, a safe zone, uh, interact, and then reclude back home. And um, more so here lately, you know, that's just really been working for me. I still have faith and hope in finding a wife and um, having a missus one day. However, uh, I'm really starting to embrace um, just hanging out with good company and hanging out with people who promote and motivate and celebrate me. I don't, I don't want to be tolerated. So that's my spiel on anxiety and socializing. Like I said, anxiety and love coming next. Uh, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you like to hear. I decide I'm going to wait till I get to 100 subscribers. 100 subscribers, then I'll plan a Q&A. Got it? Got it. Lastly, I want to give shout outs to Ray So Wavy, uh, Ray and her ex right now. I hope they get back together. We're one of the first couples of one of the first people that I watch religiously on YouTube outside of a um, web series and um, she came out with a song not too long ago. I really love the song so you'll hear it on my intro and outro but I had to show love. Peace. Turn the nigga